Last night, there was an interview that came out that featured Dolphins quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. He was on the Dan Lebitard show, and at one point, he was asked about his former head coach in Brian Flores. And it was something that it seemed like from the interviewers, they were trying to figure out a little bit more there. Tua was holding off a little bit at first, but eventually he ended up being very candid with his experience with Brian Flores as his head coach. And he voiced some frustrations with the coaching and the overall mentorship style of Brian Flores with him when he was in the beginning stages of his career. He spent his first two seasons being coached by Brian Flores after he was taken in the first round of the 2020 NFL Draft. And it sounds like behind the scenes, Brian Flores was urging the Dolphins to take Justin Herbert instead of Tua, and ultimately the front office decided to go with Tua, and it seemed like that was something that sort of created a rift initially between Brian Flores and the front office, and it ultimately went into Tua's actual tenure with the Dolphins, where it was pretty clear from the jump that Flores wasn't all that supportive of Tua. It was very interesting the way specifically that Tua's rookie season played out for them because he started the season on the bench. It seemed like sort of a natural point coming off of a, uh, there was a bye week involved that an early bye week could help sort of set Tua up and have him begin to develop. He started to take on the full-time starting role in week six and from there, or it was week seven actually. And from there, Brian Flores was just sort of playing around with how much playing time he was actually willing to give to Tua. He actually, because at that point as well, Ryan Fitzpatrick was a solid quarterback as well that, you know, I do think that ultimately at that point, Brian Flores probably had somewhat of a point that Ryan Fitzpatrick in the present, at least at that point in 2020, probably gave the Dolphins a better chance to win in that 2020 season than Tua did. So I understand where he's coming from there, but there was a clear push from the front office that they wanted him to take over, have Tua be the franchise guy, and he was very resistant to it. And ultimately, he ended up pulling Tua out of a couple games that he initially started to try and let Ryan Fitzpatrick finish it off. So the relationship very clearly was not strong, and it was pretty public at the end of his tenure there in Miami that essentially it was a choice between Tua and Brian Flores. And what what history has showed us is more times than not, front offices are going to lean with the player talent over the coach. And that's what they decided to do. So at this point, we're a couple years removed from all of that fiasco that took place between Brian Flores and Tua early on in the tenure there. And Tua, when asked about it, didn't really hold back. Again, Early on, it didn't seem like he fully wanted to bash Flores, but the more he got into it, the more open he was, where he said, quote, if you woke up every morning and I told you you sucked at what you did, that you didn't belong doing what you do, and that you shouldn't be here, and that he had an additional quote as well that was along the lines of that somebody else deserves to be in this place instead of you, that is what Tua Tagovailoa described what it was like playing under Brian Flores. And he said that over time, after hearing the constant negative reinforcement, that he started to believe it as well. And if you remember at that time too, Tua, especially with Justin Herbert sort of merging onto the scene, I still feel like the common, the average NFL fan would still argue that Justin Herbert is a better quarterback than Tua and that the 
Dolphins possibly made a mistake by drafting Tua over Herbert. But clearly at this point, based off of what Mike McDaniel has been able to get out of Tua these past two years, where while Brian Flores was more on the negativity side of it, Mike McDaniel is so much more the prototypical modern coach, which, yes, definitely does also requires some form of coddling the superstars. We hear about it all the time, about how stars in today's game don't like to be pushed quite as much as they were in the older days. And it's a whole generational difference, I think, as well. The tough love versus, you know, positive upbringing and all of those things, which is fair. I think that the human psychology aspect of it is interesting and there is definitely a difference between the older generation to the newer generation but that being said you do sort of have to adapt to the times and for brian flores i understand he came up as a head coach under bill belichick who was as tough as it gets while still also getting results so that's sort of what he learned i do think that Again, Tua at this point, he is almost sort of, he's talking about this interview, he's talking in this interview, you know, years removed from his experience with Brian Flores. So, you know, at this point, there's no real reason for him to make things up about what Brian Flores said or anything like that. I can definitely believe that Brian Flores was very harsh on Tua. Now, to what degree? That'll be a little bit of a mystery for us on the outside, but what we do know is that it's very clear, you know, Brian Flores and his actions sort of backed it up that he just was not in support of Tua. And to Tua's credit, I think that it is very hard for anybody to thrive in an environment where it's clear, especially your superiors, do not believe in you. So... That's why it was sort of the natural move, I feel like, for the Dolphins to part ways with Brian Flores. Even if Brian Flores still was right to some degree, I've been pretty vocal this offseason that I would not have paid Tua that contract that he ended up getting over $50 million a year. But at the same time, I mean, he's been able to produce these past couple of years, and it's been night and day his level of of impact from when he was when he was being coached by Brian Flores to now under Mike McCart Mike McDaniel for the two seasons that Tua was under Flores he threw for just 194 yards per game 6.6 .6 yards per attempt 27 touchdowns and 15 interceptions overall not very good definitely not what you would want over somebody from somebody that you took fifth overall but now, in the past two seasons since then, under Mike McDaniel, Tua is throwing 272 yards per game, 8.5 yards per attempt, 54 touchdowns, and just 22 interceptions. So, a significant improvement over these past couple seasons, which is why have I definitely have not been sold on Tua that he is going to be excellent for the next handful of years. But what I will say is... I'm not ready to put a cap on Tua's ceiling just now, even if I didn't like early on. I liked, didn't love him at Alabama. I maybe thought that he was a little bit overdrafted at the time, and I still don't know how much faith I have in him, but that being said, he's 26 years old, and I understand, especially when you look at the history of quarterbacks, we usually know pretty early on whether or not you have it or not. But that being said, you know, Tua is just sort of coming into his own. He almost pressed the reset button and is was going into a new transformation a couple years into his NFL career based off of the switch from Brian Flores to Mike McDaniel. And we have seen him drastically improve each of the past two seasons, including to last year, where he led the league in passing yards with over 4,600. So, again, by no means am I ready to put a ceiling on Tua. 
Do I love the contract? Still, the answer is no. But honestly, when you look behind the scenes as well and you think about sort of what went on about how he was so stunted from a growth perspective early on, maybe he needs to be tougher. Sure, that can be a criticism. But at the same time, I think he makes valid points as well in terms of the difficulties he was experiencing being coached by somebody who seemed to have zero faith in him. And that was something that Mike McDaniel made a clear priority of himself coming into that next season was that he needed to find to his confidence once again. And it seems like they're at this place. Um, I do think that Brian Flores is a good coach. We'll see how it works out, whether or not he ever gets another head coach opportunity. I think he's a good defensive mind. Thought that he did pretty well with the Vikings last year, and I'm going to be really curious to see what he looks like this year now that he has more natural pass rushers and he's going to maybe have more opportunities to scheme up more on the back end as opposed to their very blitz-heavy 2023 season. But that being said, you know, uh, the number one sort of obviously, yes, there's some bad blood there, but more times than not. And yes, there are people actually, you know, their, their biases come into play, but I do feel like the people that you work with probably have the best read on who you are as an employee, as a motivator. It was not a very ringing endorsement from Tua in this interview. He, he one last quote that I want to throw out there is he said, quote, I don't care who you are. You can be the president of the United States. You have a terrible person telling you things that you don't want to hear or probably shouldn't be hearing. And you're going to start believing that about yourself. And so that's what sort of ended up happening. The terrible person quote is kind of a crazy way to frame it. Now, at, at this point in the interview, Tua was talking a little bit in hypothetical, of course, with this whole President of the United States analogy. Um, interesting word choice for sure, though, in terrible person. And, you know, at his core, maybe that's what he feels about Brian Flores to some degree, and it can be somewhat justified, but... You know, I think that both parties here in Tua and Brian Flores still have some proving of themselves that need to be done. And Tua at least has a big, big contract attached to himself now. So, you know, proving himself is more in the eyes of the media and, you know, NFL fandom for however much he even cares about that. He's proven himself to his organization at least enough to get the money. So we'll see sort of from there where it progresses. And I'm definitely keeping my eye on Brian Flores because, again, I think he's a good defensive coordinator. And we'll sort of see how the future plays out for him from here. But definitely, again, not very positive um, words to use in terms of Flores that as he goes on in this coaching search, I mean, you have to imagine if he ever gets another head coaching interview, they are going to ask him about this whole situation with Tua and probably some of these quotes that we brought up as well. So you let me know how you feel about it in the comments section, but we are now going to be moving on here to some of the quarterback battles in the NFL quarterback battle. No more though in Washington as Dan Quinn has officially announced that Jaden Daniels will be the week one starter for the Washington commanders and will be starter for the foreseeable future. So we will dive into all of that, but first a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. 